Easy parking with Easy Trip. Now available at Dundrum Town Centre. So you can now use your toll tags to park in our car parks. Simply register at easytrip.ie forward slash parking. Easy parking with Easy Trip. Dundrum, where more happens. Up slips the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Hey! Hey, I'm Dr. Scott, and I'm here with my good friends, Shirley Murdoch.
He is working it out in our favor. And I truly believe that all things, because the Bible says all things work together for good for them that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. God is so good, and he constantly, consistently does great things on our behalf. And um, just to be able to wake up in the morning and have a roof over our heads and uh, transportation and food, things that are basic necessities of life, God always comes through for us. And I'm just grateful to God for all his many blessings and all that he's doing. And we'll continue to do because he's just that good and he loves us. Uh, one of my favorite things to say, uh, no matter what you've done, how you've done it, and who you may have done it with, God loves you and he will change your life for the better. If we just allow him to, he will change us for the better. Um, as a uh, minister of God's great gospel, um, it is a privilege as well as a awesome duty to encourage and build up God's people. Um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is to lift up the bow down head. It's not to uh, tear people down. It's not to discourage uh, others, but it's to build up people. It's the gospel that you uh, preach or teach or um, maybe just talk to someone about. If it's not uplifting, it's not encouraging, it's not provoking to uh, good works, then it might not be the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's a saying that only what we do for Christ will last. And I want to make sure that I am speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ, not my opinion, not what I think, but what God says and his word says. That's what uh, we have to spread to the people of God and let them know that God loves them and force that he wants to do something great and marvelous in the lives of those that will allow him to. Um, I want to encourage you tonight to keep going. Keep going. Philippians 1 and 6, my, one of my favorite scriptures, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a quote from Harriet Tubman that says, if you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches, keep going. If they're shouting after you, keep going. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. And if I can encourage you all on this evening, as a fourth stated, this is one of my favorite scriptures and favorite persons of the Bible, the Apostle Paul. I love the Apostle Paul because every one of us can relate to him. About 12 or 13 years ago in Jacksonville, Florida, I remember reading a billboard that read, We Buy Ugly Houses. At first, I thought it was just an advertisement. But the Spirit gave me a spiritual revelation about that sign. A sinful being, sins that I habitually practice, and I'm grateful that on a night in February 2003 in that bedroom, on County Road 229 North in Sanderson, Florida. He saved me, he redeemed me, he healed my sin sick soul, and made me whole. Thank God. I'm I'm glad that he saved me. I don't know about you all, but I am so glad that God has saved you, or if you're saved, you're out of the outhouse, you're out of the dope house, the prostitution house, whatever kind of sin sick house you may have been living in. And now, if you are faithfully serving in God's kingdom, it's a blessing, it's an honor, and it's a privilege. And um, not to deviate too far off the subject on this evening, but um, people of God, those that are saved and called by God to do a work for him, we must start serving outside of the house. Well, what do you mean by serving outside of the house? The church is a building that we go to um, often, that, um, that we worship, we praise, we listen to messages, uh, we encourage 
you know, one another when we're there, nice to people. But after and outside of those walls, that's when the world um, that God has on the outside that we need to impact. We need to impact the world around us. And it starts just in our individual homes. We ought to be impacting the people in our homes in a positive way. Um, oftentimes, the people in our homes that live with us see a side of us that is not always the the best. It's not always uh, representing Jesus the Christ. But we must begin to master um, by the power of the Holy Spirit, master living the way God would have us to live, starting in our homes. And then if we work, taking it to our jobs, being that light, and at our, whatever kind of uh, clubs or organizations we may be a part of, our extended family, um, our friends, people that come in close proximity with us ought to see the light of Jesus working in our lives. Scripture says, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify God. And that's what the world needs to see. They need a light. We live in a dark world. There's so much going on that is uh, sin-ridden. Uh, there's all kinds of things that uh, is going on. Uh, like the song says, uh, mur- mur- murders and robbers, nowhere seems to be safe. We, we've got uh, high rates of murders in our cities. We've got um, kids that are strung out on all kinds of drugs. It used to be when I was growing up, we thought crack and was the, the, the greatest drug that was out there. Now there's all kinds of things like ecstasy and um, all kinds of uh, different drugs that's out there that our kids, our teenagers are being exposed to, and we're losing a generation. So it behooves us to get outside of the four walls of the sanctuary and get out and let this world know about this great Jesus. And one side note, if I can just give a tip of evangelism, um, a lot of times when we go out to evangelize, we go out ill-equipped. We go out uh, with without two things, and they're very important. And as a matter of fact, I believe they are the most important thing you need in evangelism. One is love. We need the love of Jesus because you cannot draw folks without love. Uh, the Bible says, "Without love and kindness, have I drawn, uh, with love and kindness have I drawn thee." And God drew us with our messed up, raggedy, tore up from the floor up selves. In spite of all we've done, He still loved us, and that's what we got to do. We got to exemplify this love that Jesus shared for us, and that constantly He constantly shows for us. We must give that love to others. And the other thing. We must be equipped with the word of God because uh, if we don't know the word, we can't share what we don't know. We can't live what we don't know. So it is, it's, it's, it's imperative that we show the love of Jesus because we are represent, representatives of Jesus. And when we represent Jesus, we represent him through love. We have to love people to the place of salvation. You know, a lot of people don't come because when they come to church, they don't feel loved. But we have to love them. And then once we love them, we'll see them come and want to know, why do you love me? I'm, I'm a, a wretch undone. I'm a, I'm a drug addict. I'm a drunkard. I'm a liar. I'm a backbiter. I'm a gospel. I'm, I'm, I'm just a sinner. I'm a messed up. And you're still loving me. You're still encouraging me. Why are you doing this? And that's when we have that opportunity to tell them about Jesus. So it's imperative that we serve our fellow man with the love of Jesus. And child of God, let me tell you this. You are a house. That's why Paul penned the scripture. We often hear at funerals, if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, I have another building. So this scripture lets us know we are a house that possesses a soul and a spirit that lives in a body. Truth be told, serving God is a lifetime of sacrifice. We have to sacrifice our time, time we may want to spend doing all that we desire to do 
but we find ourselves going to services, visiting the hospitals, nursing homes, stopping on the corner to encourage that person. We really just want to go home and see what Cookie is tripping about in an empire and watch one of my favorite show, Friends. We have so many things that we want to do, but we have to make time for doing what God would have us to do. Or when that friend calls and you see her number on the call ID and you know you don't want to really answer, you know, but she just got to tell you how her husband tripping or how his wife is getting on his last nerve or how their job is uh, on the fritz and uh, the kids are locked up and, you know, the same old, same old, but yet we'll listen, but we need to, while we're listening, encourage and pray for them time and time again. We have to keep going. I know the roads get rough and going surely gets tough. And the hills are hard to climb. But I remember the words of this song sung by Kiki Shear, Hang on in there. Child of God, hang in there. Weeping may endure for the night, but know that joy will come in the morning. The Bible says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. There's going to be some times you're going to cry. There's going to be some times you want to give up. You want to throw in the towel, but hang on in there. It's going to be some time where your money looks funny, like the saying says, your change looks strange, you're sick in your body, uh, All seems like all hell is broke loose, your children are disobedient, your a spouse is getting on your last, this, last, this, last, this nerve, uh, your car break down, house need repairs, seem like all kind of trouble, but I'm here to remind you of one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord shall deliver me out of them all. I know that whatever I'm going through, God is going to bring me through. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know where. But I know that God is going to bring me through because his word tells me that I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I, all things work together for good for them that love God and call it according to his purpose. So I know that God is going to bring me through. I just got the hang on in there. Got to keep going. Got to keep moving forward. Don't go backwards. Don't go back to what you used to do to get relief. Some folks, drugs was a relief. Some folks uh, being uh, in sexual relations with people that um, were not your spouse and you just was doing something to do it, um, thinking that was going to get you relief. But let me tell you, the flesh profit of nothing. But the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hang on in there. Let the word do the work. You might be depressed. You might be down and out. You might be sick, sad, whatever you may be going through. Let God's word heal you and everywhere you hurt and bring you to a place that he's trying to get you to be. I remember this old song when I was a little boy growing up at Johnson Chapel Church of God by Faith. If I stop right here, I won't get my crown. I've got to run until the sun goes down. i got to keep going. I got to go forward in Christ Jesus. And let me tell you, his word will, will direct you. That's why it's so important to get in this word. The devil does not want us to study the word of God. Satan will do everything in his power to distract us and keep us from getting in this word. For example, we go to work. We may say, okay, I'm going to work, and I'm going to take my break, and I'm going to read my Bible, and I'll eat my lunch, and and then I'm going to go back inside and go to work. And oftentimes, it seems like those days that you make up your mind what you're going to do, you're going to set aside some time for God, then it seems like everything on the job is going haywire. Um, you, that break you thought you were going to get, you didn't get that break. Or you you, you, you couldn't um, concentrate because your, your, your neighbors in the next cubicle or the next station were loud, and, and you just could not find that quiet place to. Get in the word. And that's Satan. Satan's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So you might have to take some extra steps. Uh, you may have to get up a little earlier before you get dressed and get the kids together to go to school. You might have to sacrifice that sleep. To get or when you come home from work, you know, you might have to cook dinner um, and make sure the kids are taken care of. But you might have to steal away. Before you get into bed, because if I can warn you of something, um, taking a little side note here, um, we are, we know that Satan's 
so that Satan does not want us to get in that world. We know that Satan wants to keep us distracted, distract and keep us out of uh, getting the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding from God. But if you really want to know something from God, sometimes it may take a sacrifice. You may have to turn the TV off. You may have to um, turn the cell phone on. Do not disturb. What? Uh, make sure the kids are asleep. Just find you some quiet time daily that you can get in his word so you can get encouraged and get the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that's in God's word that will help us. I, re- I, re- I remember telling somebody this. The, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. His word will direct us. That's why we have to pray, seek his face through prayer and fasting. But we must keep going. And don't just keep going, but we got to go forward. We got to move ahead. Stop looking back at our past, our past hurts, our past failures, our past defeats. Try to stop worrying about what Ray Ray and Pookie and all of them are doing. Stop looking back at Nisha and Laquita, but look for what God is sending our way. What is God bringing to us? We got to keep going. Don't stop until you find it because there is a bright side. On the other side, keep moving forward and higher in Christ Jesus. We will continue to grow when we study, when we read, study, and obey what God's word is telling us. And can I can I just be honest with you and give you a real quick personal te- testimony? I was eloquent at reading uh, and studying God's word. Ever since I, I think about 10th grade when I got saved, I would get on the school bus in the mornings, and I would have my Bible, and I would read it. And I remember my old school bus driver, Miss Sharon Combs, she would keep the lights on because it would be dark when we were heading to school so I could read my Bible. And I got the knowledge and the understanding, and I could tell you the scriptures. I could quote Mark eleven twenty four, whatsoever you desire, believe that you receive them when you pray, and you should have them. Psalm 35, weeping may and do for the night, but joy will come in the morning. John 6, 63, the flesh prompted nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. I can quote the scriptures, but this is what the issue was. I couldn't live them. And people of God, now more than anything, we got to live this word of God. I, it's not easy. It's not a breeze. It's difficult. And, 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 and we get discouraged because sometimes we fall, we fail, falter. We get up in the morning with this renewed mindset of, I'm going to do good. I ain't going to do what I did on yesterday. I'm going to be better. I'm going to go higher. I'm going to do this, do that. And by noontime, we've done what we said we're not going to do. Paul even lets us know. He said, the good that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I said I wasn't going to do, I find myself doing. I got a war going on, my flesh against my spirit. But thank God that God gives us the endurance that when we fall, we can get up again and we can keep going. We don't have to stay in the same mud pit. We don't have to stay stay down and out because Jesus will bring us out. Just trust in his word and depend on him and pray for strength that God, for God to help us as we move forward trying to do his work. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going forward. Keep moving higher in Christ Jesus and let God do a great work because the text starts with being confident you got to have faith. You got to know that you know that you know that this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, when you were created, God had a good work in mind for you. And he will perform it if we allow it until the day of the Lord Jesus. God started you all, and he will complete what he started in you if you let him. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you right now asking you to help us to keep on keeping on. Help us to keep going. God, it's not always easy. It's actually hard, Lord, when we work in our own strength and we try to do it our way. But God, your strength is perfect in our weakness. Lord, help us to move forward in you. Help us to not go back to the same old vomit. Help us to not return to those things that Keep us bound and keep us in a life of defeat. But help us to go forward in you, doing your work and working in your way. 
God, we need you. We can't make it on our own. So, Lord, if you help us, and I know you will, we'll be the successful Christians that you called us to be. And, Lord, use us for your glory and for your honor and move upon our hearts and our lives like never before. I see us in the future, and we look better than we look right now. I see us victorious. I see us winners. I see us going higher and higher in you. And we thank you right now for what you're doing and what you're going to do in our lives. We have the victory. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're going higher in you. In Jesus' name, we thank you for what you've done. Amen. Amen.